every morning alike. Clear your throats on the way to school. Not here. Sounds more like a dirt track than an assembly hall. <coughs> Come out! Come out, that boy! Who coughed? Mr. Hesker, somewhere near you, I think. Fetch that boy out. I'm down. It was you. You were coughing. It wasn't. Yes, it was. I heard you. It won't, sir. Oh, come on, don't argue, we know. It won't come be on. honest. Headmaster stood it. Come on. McDowell, I might have known it. Get to my office. It won't be, sir. And heaven help you. Casper! Casper! Hold on! On your feet! You were asleep. Were you, Casper? I don't know, sir. I know! You were! You were asleep! Why were you asleep? You were having a scoundrel. I don't know, sir. I know why. You were roaming the streets at night. Instead of being home in bed. See me in my office afterwards. I'll give you something to sleep about. See it. Here are the announcements. A reminder that the youth employment officer will be here this afternoon to meet the Easter leavers. Your parents should have been told. But if any boy has forgotten and thinks that his parents may wish to attend his interview, then he can consult the list on the main notice board for the approximate times. And finally, for three members of the Smokers' Union, caught yesterday behind the game storeroom, there will be a meeting with me after assembly when I would be pleased to see and hear them pay their dues. You'd better not stick me, lad. I'm fetching my father up if he does. What are you bringing your father down? He don't run out when, when he comes. How do you mean? Last time he came, he got stick and all. Shit, will that? I'm sick of hearing you. When he came down, they're all laughing at him. You are? Yeah, weren't they? Don't say that about my father. Right. He's not going to beat me anyhow. What do you want? I've got a message for Mr. Grass from Mrs. Spooner. Better wait in the queue then, aren't you? Yeah. It's his favourite trick. He likes to keep you waiting. He thinks it makes it worse. Ah, you can keep me till four o'clock. I'm not bothered. I'd rather the cane than do lessons. Come here, you. Save us this till after we come out of crisis. I can't help think I'm a smoker as well. We'll not search you, but he'll search us, and if he finds a money, we'll get two extra. I don't want him. You want some fist instead? You want to take them? You bet, lad, or you'll be saying your prayers. OK. If I get cane, you give me something. Aye. Some fist if you don't. I hope he's here, Grice Woodin. Single file. Right. You lost, man. Please, I'm going to get it. Please. On your way. Form room. You locked. Inside. <laughs> Same old faces. Same old faces. Ten years this school's been opened. And ten years have we seen, after every assembly, a line of boys here. And the same old faces. Say, I've got to Shut up, man. Don't interrupt. I close the door. I've taught in this city for over 30 years. I've taught some of your parents. Your father, McDowell. In the old slum schools in the city, before they built this fine estate, and this wonderful school. Things are no better now than they were then. I just can't understand this generation. I thought I knew something about young people. I should be able to, you know, with my experience. But with you, no. It just seems a complete waste of money and a waste of time. Like it's a waste of time talking to you now. Why are you listening? Are you, McDowell? Yes, sir. No, you're not. Crossman, you're not listening, are you? No, sir. No, you're not. None of you are listening. Look at that glazed expression on your faces. You never listen. Yours is the generation that never listens. Because we can never tell you anything. You're the sophisticated ones. With all your music and your gear. But you know, it's superficial. It's a sheen. And there's nothing solid or worthwhile underneath. And why do I know this? Why do I know there's been no advance in discipline or decency? Or morals or manners? Why do I know it? Because I still have to use this to you boys every day. Why? In the 20s and 30s, I could understand it. They were hard times. But they produced qualities in people that you lot will never have. I can be stopped in the street by someone I taught then. 
and we'll talk about the old days, and we'll laugh about the thrashings that I gave him. But what do I get from you lot? A honk from a greasy, pimply-faced youth sitting at the wheel of a big second-hand car. I don't know. I just don't know. No guts, no backbone, nothing to commend you whatsoever. Mere fodder for the mass media. And so, until someone produces a better solution, I'll continue to use this cane. Knowing fully well that you'll be back for it time and time and time again. You smokers will go out of here with your hands ringing. But will it stop you smoking? You're already looking forward to smoking a break? You lad, what are you grinning about? Not grinning, sir. You are? I bet you're already thinking about smoking a break. Empty your pockets. They're loaded with cigarettes. Come on, all of you, empty your pockets. Please, sir, I'm... Quiet, lad, empty your pockets. Say you don't understand. Empty your pockets, lad. Disgusting. Please, say you You again? You again? Sir. Empty your pockets. But, sir, I've brought a message for Empty this. your pockets. I don't believe it. I don't believe this. Empty your pockets, lad. Empty your pockets and you're told. Come on, man. Ah. A regular little cigarette factory, aren't you? Sir. Pull that rubbish away. Now, I hope it's going to be a lesson to you. I don't suppose for one minute it will be. I don't doubt before the end of the week you'll be back in here again for exactly the same crime, smoking. Perhaps once in a while it might sink in. Yes, sir. That you're wasting your money. That it's your money that you're burning. And it's your hands that get caned when you come in here. Good morning. And to the gladiators. Where have you been? Good to see Mr. Grass, sir. In for the stick? Sure. Sir. How many did you get? Two. Did it hurt? Not, Not bad. bad. Not bad. No. Hope it didn't. I'll sit down. 